Academy of Country Music Honors George Strait, Reba McIntyre, Dolly Parton, Nashville. The Academy of Country Music honored outstanding performers, musicians, songwriters and music industry figures and venues Wednesday night, August 23, in ceremonies held at Nashville's Ryman Auditorium. Among the honorees was the CMT Dramatic Series, Nashville, which won the Tex Ritter Film Award for its behind-the-scenes portrayal of the behind-the-scenes side of country music. Taped before a live audience for broadcast September 15 on CBS TV, the honorees and winners had already been announced for the event that featured performances by George Strait, Alan Jackson, Chris Stapleton, Toby Keith, Little Big Town, Kelsey Ballerini, Brad Paisley, Maren Morris, Thomas Rhett, Lady Antebellum's Hilary Scott, Chris Jansen and Nashville cast members Claire Bowen and Charles Easton. Each performance was designed to celebrate the career and impact of the person being honored. The Honors Program, now in its 11th year, is a spin-off of the much more glittery and publicized Academy of Country Music Awards show, which is televised live each spring and focuses on musical achievements of the past year. The Academy of Country Music is based in Los Angeles and is the West Coast equivalent of the Country Music Association in Nashville. The evening's first honor, the Mayborn Axton Award, went to Reba McIntyre. Lady Antebellum's Hilary Scott, who's also the daughter of McIntyre's former singing partner, Linda Davis, opened the segment with a spirited rendition of The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia, McIntyre's 1992 hit. Then Little Big Town's Karen Fairchild joined Scott to belt out Does He Love You? with Scott singing the other woman part her mother immortalized in the 1993 original. The crowd rewarded the pair with waves of applause. To round out the tribute, LBT's Kimberly Schlappman came out to assist Scott and Fairchild in a romp through Little Rock, 1986. The crowd stood as McIntyre, who's hosted the ACM Awards 14 times, stepped up to accept her trophy. Fabled songwriter and fellow Oklahoman Jimmy Webb introduced Toby Keith and explained why he was receiving the Academy's Poets Award. He's written or co-written about everything he's recorded, Webb asserted. He's a master songwriter. Keith got a standing ovation when he emerged from the wings and strapped on his guitar. Backed by the house band and a brass trio, Keith kicked off with his first hit single, Should Have Been a Cowboy, 1993 and rolled on through the raucous Who's Your Daddy, 2002. The audience roared its approval. The three members of Lady Antebellum introduced Kelsey Ballerini, who was tapped for the Jean Weed Milestone Award, with a round of praise for her successes both as a recording artist and songwriter for co-writing three consecutive number one singles. Seated at a microphone and flanked by a guitarist and a backup singer, Ballerini opened with her current single, Legends, and then sang snippets of Love Me Like You Mean It, 2014, Dibs, 2015, and Peter Pan, 2016. She broke down crying, holding her hands to her face and walking away from the microphone upon being presented her award. Finally gaining composure, she said, the greatest gift that we had, she said, alluding to her support team after she came to Nashville was the fact that we were really naive. You don't know the odds. You think you can do anything. Jansen, a last-minute addition to the show, was picked to honor the late songwriter Shel Silverstein with the second Poets Award of the evening. And an inspired pick it was. Judging from the crowd's euphoric, clap-along, sing-along reaction as he blazed through a boy named Sue and the cover of The Rolling Stone. Jansen is shaping up to be one of country music's hardest acts to follow. He was pure energy, prancing and strutting the stage as if he were treading live coals. His cover of A Boy Named Sue was faster and more feverish than Johnny Cash's 1969 original, but just as sparkling with wry humor. Jansen dropped his guitar and took to the harmonica for the cover of The Rolling Stone, the 1972 Dr. Hook classic. Jansen said he was a longtime fan of Silverstein, who had once read to his second-grade class in his native Missouri. 
Jansen presented the Poets Award to Silverstein's friend, record executive Susan Nadler, who said she first met him at her popcorn stand in Key West, Florida. His presence is so strong, she said, I still dream of him at least once a month. When Dolly Parton came in to receive the Gary Haber Lifting Lives Award, the crowd erupted, both in noise and action, standing up, cheering and craning to get a better look. Once they quieted down, Brad Paisley walked center stage to honor her by singing My Tennessee Mountain Home, 1973. Vince Gill was scheduled to perform with Paisley but had to drop out earlier in the day with voice problems. Paisley praised Pardon's charitable impulses. If you're ever in need, he said, there's nobody better than Dolly Pardon. Pardon lived up to his assessment devoting most of her acceptance remarks to charitable projects she's backing. Among these is a rebuilding of the fire-ravaged resort town of Gatlinburg, Tennessee, for which she raised more than $10 million, and her new children's album, I Believe in You, all proceeds from which will go to her imagination library that supplies free books to children all over the world. Come back to the Smokies. She implored the crowd. Singer Cassidy Pope who's appeared in the CMT series, presented the Tex Ritter Film Award for Nashville. The award recognizes an outstanding television movie, series or feature film released during the preceding calendar year which prominently features country music. Pope introduced Claire Bowen and Charles Aston, who play the characters Scarlett O'Connor and Deacon Claiborne in the series. They harmonized on Sanctuary, a song featured in Season 5. Throughout the song, the crowd interrupted with applause. Bowen and Aston are both accomplished musicians who tour regularly and perform in concerts with other cast members. During a brief break in the awards presentations, Marin Morris paid tribute to the late Glenn Campbell by singing Galveston, his Jimmy Webb composed hit from 1969. Syndicated radio personality Bobby Bones then came to the stage to praise fellow DJ and Countdown King. Bob Kingsley, who was then presented the second Mayborn Axton Award for his many contributions to country music. Thomas Rhett tipped his hat to Kingsley, one of his early radio supporters, by singing his 2015 hit, Die a Happy Man. The penultimate prize of the evening, the Songwriter of the Year Award, was presented to Laurie McKenna, who wrote Tim McGraw's 2016 chart topper, Humble and Kind as well as co-writing Little Big Town's long-running hit, Girl Crush. Little Big Town serenaded her with its current single, When Someone Stops Loving You, which she also co-wrote. Alluding to the universality of songs, the Boston-based mother of five said, We don't define ourselves by gender or race, we're just songwriters. As the show approached the end of its fourth hour, Jason Aldean walked on to present George Strait the Cliffy Stone Icon Award. He recalled seeing Strait in concert 20 years ago and noted how much that event had inspired him to pursue his own musical career. Chris Stapleton took center stage to sing an impassioned, almost wailing version of Strait's 1993 classic, When Did You Stop Loving Me, from his pure country movie soundtrack. Stapleton then exited, and Alan Jackson came on, backed by a fiddler, to do Marina Del Rey, 1982, The Fireman, 1985, and concluding with a single line from his 2000 duet with Strait, Murder on Music Row. By this time, many in the audience were leaving. But Jackson's segment made a great number of them return to their seats. When Strait came to the stage, he told the crowd, when I set out on the, musical, road, I figured I had five good years. Now it's over thirty. My feet don't feel like they're touching the ground right now, he continued, voicing his abiding love for performing, and I feel that every time I come out on stage. Time. As he did so, the crowd streamed out of the Ryman, having experienced just that very sensation.